Well, hello there, and welcome back to War Thunder. I'm Corny Swiss, and today I'm driving around the Premium Sherman, a Russian medium tank. And I felt like I haven't done an arcade battle in a while, and I felt like, you know what, I'm going to do an arcade battle. I'd been playing uh, tanks that I wanted to finish reviews for and things like that, just sort of all day long, or when I was playing, rather. And, I don't know, just felt like mixing it up a little bit, throwing around, um, throwing around some shells in arcade mode. I don't know why I had to think there. But another lesson from this battle is that uh, even when the battle starts off a little rough, like, uh, okay, where's this guy? I uh, can't quite see him. Just going to light up the, with the machine guns a little bit. Oh, there's something I can shoot. Uh, not quite. Alright, let's find something else. Oh, that guy. Oh, goodness. First hit I take sets me on fire. Blows out my gun. Just bad things have happened. At this point, I was thinking to myself, well, my goose might be cooked here. Because so I took a second shot. So I'm just letting him have it with the machine gun, thinking, oh, I'm not going to be able to repair. You know? And even if I do, it's not going to be a great game because it's, you know, I'm farther behind now and everyone in front is going to be killing everybody. But that's why you finish, that's why you keep playing, though, is for exactly what happens. My gun's back up, so at least I can shoot at these guys now, right? Alright, decent hit on the KV-2, got his, well, it did something to him, not a whole lot. Adjust fire. And that's something you really need to do in the, uh... In all the Ameri with all the American guns is if you fire your first shell and it doesn't knock them out or you don't hit ammo or something like that adjust your fire don't shoot the same spot over and over and over again because it's the definition of insanity you can do that with uh, AP shells with big you know fragmentation spreads but with the American AP shells that have the frag uh, damage effects where they don't explode Shooting someone in the exact same place, unless it's an ammo rack, is not the best way to go about killing them. It's going to take lots of shots, and who knows, maybe someone else will just roll right up and take them out. So, when I'm shooting at someone, and my first shot doesn't kill them, I usually switch fire to another weaker point of the tank, or maybe I try and readjust, get a new shot, because unless you know that that shot is going to pay off, don't waste your time by shooting the exact same shot over and over again. Like even let's say I'm faced with a tiger directly in the front. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna shoot right through his driver's hatch, right? And most of the time, that's good enough to knock out the tank. If it doesn't, well, why don't I move my fire to the other side of the tank and try and knock out that section of crew? And this part, I thought I was dead. I was saying to myself, "Oh my goodness, he's gonna light me up." But nope, not today. <laughs> This was one of those games where things like that don't bother you. Now, this is Break, and I don't know why for some reason, but it says Break and then it names the map like Carpati or something like that, and I I don't know what that's what that's all about. It's Carpathians, so. But there is this tiger is just kinda hanging out in the middle and now this I can understand if you just take the same shot over and over again. I'm trying different things, but he is angled a little weird, and I have his the ass of his tank, and he's already on fire, so don't really want to shoot there. So I'm just looking for what I can do to damage that guy. You know, and it not tremendously successful, I will say, but get a healthy assist out of it. And sometimes an assist is worth more than a kill. I think I've noticed. I don't know. I don't. That may be wrong. But there's sometimes where I get really big assists. And I'm like, I don't know if that tank was worth that much. <laughs> but maybe it was, I don't know. But there is something... Uh, there is something I do like about arcade battles. I'm sure I've said it before, but I'll say it again. Arcade battles are fun because they... They make everything just happen so much faster. If that makes any sense. For example, there's none of this... Uh, oh... I have to range you now. No, you're told how far away he is. So you don't have to... So you don't... No one wastes time really guiding the shots, you know, walking them in and doing things like that. 
which means that the action is generally very quick, very fast, which, you know, is its own type of uh, play style and game style. You know, it's more of the arcadey tank battles, which is, you know, fun sometimes. I mean, that's why I'm sure I'm not alone, but I play, I play World of Tanks every once in a while. I play War Thunder mostly, but World of Tanks every once in a while. Just to mix things up, because I find both games fairly fun. I find War Thunder more fun, but I still think World of Tanks is fun. But at this point, we've captured their zone, and the Sherman gets the good news, that's for sure. We've captured their zone, we're recapturing our zone. So we have a pretty strong push on the enemy position. I always find it interesting though, when you cap the enemy zone, your spawn point is at your cap zone, the one you have to defend. Doesn't that mean you could spawn in just a sea of enemies? That seems a little weird to me. But here's a tiger down here. He's going to be kind of tough. He's a little far away. Just about every shot I take on him is going to be a little difficult at this range. But the advantage I have is he is facing me dead on. He is angled up a little though. Which means his lower plate's probably the better shot. But I can also get up over here and change the angle and maybe take away that upward angle and make those shots easier for myself. And also, maybe I can see some other targets to shoot. That'd always be nice. Oh. There we go. Yeah, but I kind of got a... Just through the course of the day, I just said, you know what, I don't want to play realistic. I don't want to play sim anymore. I, that's what I've done all day. I did the mission. Um, in the BT-5 uh, in all realistic mode and that didn't take long, I got really lucky, had some good games then uh, played simulator and realistic to get clips for reviews and to kind of figure out what tanks were all about so I just said, you know what, I need some mindless killing let's just play arcade and I'm glad I did because I don't play arcade often but when I do I usually find it pretty enjoyable but what's happening right now is the team as a whole is making a concerted push onto the enemy spawns in the final cap circle. I decided that it might be best served for me to take out some of these tigers. Because, you know, the tigers are probably the toughest thing facing us at the moment. So I'm going to swoop out and then I'm going to come back down. And I originally was going to try and nail two or three tigers with my bomb load. But then I decided that was too difficult. So I'm going to go for a tiger and a Sherman. And two bombs each should do it. And of course it did. So nice, healthy little bomb thing. I, the bomber, I'm glad they added that into arcade. It's kind of like a kill streak. It's nice. It's when you're winning, you win harder. Or if you're losing and you manage to get one, it can bring you back. But we're back in the tank now. And the battle is kind of, I don't know if it's stalemated, but it's certainly not moving forward very fast. A lot of our guys are sitting around this area kind of just, you know, taking shots at the enemy. That is something you see a little more of an arcade, but you certainly see it in realistic mode is when targets are illuminated, people stop and shoot. Now with in simulator I find it less because when targets are illuminated it's much harder to find them and you more often than not need to keep moving to uh, get a better I guess firing solution on but here's a Sherman right here. Send one right through his gun mailer. Did some damage on the inside of his tank there. Now a tank I am anxious to try is the M46. I have it. But I need to I need to play it a bunch and get the uh, the ammo choices. Because I don't I don't the stock ammunition looks pretty bad, so I'm probably gonna have to mindlessly grind it in arcade or do something like that. Or maybe just YOLO and put a couple dollars on it and get the uh, ammunition so I can you know, work with it easier. But I'm probably just going to play it and get the ammunition choices. Because that's a review I also want to do. And then the M103, honestly, I'm not that excited for. Uh, another one I need to get and it's just... Oof, I just don't hear good things about it. But in this battle, we're right up in the cap circle just beheaded a few of his crew members. This is where this tank, well, American guns in general, maybe suffer a little bit. 
they almost always have the penetration. It's just that uh, spread, the frag spread, is just not very good. And I don't, I don't know if there's really anything that can be done about it. Because I'm all about, because I feel like it's a, I feel like it's a problem in terms of gameplay, where uh, it makes American ammunition types quintessentially weaker. However, I've noticed that American tanks generally do very well against competition, so I don't know. I feel like it, I mean, if it's historically accurate, that's what the shells were, and this is how they behave, then, you know, can you really do anything about it? But I want to point out, I started this game getting nuked, set on fire, gun destroyed, and we finished the game on top with a very, very healthy reward. And if I had anything to research for the Russians, I got a very healthy bonus towards that, but I have all but one of the Russian tanks. I still don't have the ZUT, whatever it is, 37. I just, I just don't want to get it. <laughs> just don't want it. <laughs> So I guess I won't, I just won't have it. And I don't feel bad about that. <laughs> On another subject, I'm trying really hard to get the M8. I, I want it just because I, I'm just one of those people where if there's something I can work at and get that, you know, is kind of unique, I, you know, I'm going to try and do it. But uh, I know I'm probably going to miss, I'm probably not going to be able to finish all the missions because I know I think at least one day I don't think I'll be able to play. Which means I'll be missing one mission, so I really need to get it from the random chances. But that seems like a really low chance, because I've done all but two right now. The Tank Destroyer one, and like the most recent German Medium one. Oh, hello. And uh, I still don't have it. So, anyway. Thanks for watching. I've been Corny Swiss, and I'll see you next time.